971. Good to have you with us here on a Tuesday. Terrence. Yeah. They're What's doing up? they're doing it again, brother. Tigers Who are they? Tigers are starting to flirt again. Uh, you know, we could go this time. We're sitting here going, oh my God, they can't beat the A's. They can't beat the Angels. Then they had that tank job against the Yankees. Then what do they do? They go into the weekend. They sweep the Sox out of town. They beat Chris Sale. Blue Jays come in white hot. They throw them in a garbage can. Fulmer goes out, looks unhittable again for his fourth straight start. And now here's what happens. Here's what happens. TTF. TTF. Typical Tiger fan. Sully. Look what he does. Guy's got his little Tiger T-shirt <laughs> on. Comes into the show meeting. A little pep in his step. At first, I, I wondered if he had a romantic evening with his lady. He said no, and that's none of your business. He goes, no, you know, Tigers are playing good ball. They're over 500, two and a half out of first. He goes, I'm thinking we'll lead the show with him. That's what he said. That's TTF. He's back. Sully is back. Can I get a favor? Yeah. Hey, let me get a favor from both of you. What's up? The next time we, excuse me, we take the air. Yeah. Tigers would have played two games. They would be done with Toronto, who's a good team. Uh, tomorrow, we, after Tiger tomorrow Baseball. after Tiger Baseball. Can we get fully engorged in it? Mm -hmm. Or Yeah, that's fair. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, am, <laughs> I am tired Roberto of the Roberto really enjoyed your uh, terminology the, No, there. they're being consistently inconsistent. R you mean you, like Roberto with his production? Right, well, that too. But do you know who the team <laughs> captain is of the Detroit Tigers? Huh? Go to the team. Who the team captain is for the Tigers? Say what? <laughs> I'm, all, I'm just screwing with you. <laughs> Chauncey Billups. Okay. This is a Chauncey Billups type of team. If it ain't rough, it ain't right. Bam. Chauncey Bam. family. Right. Yeah. Isn't isn't this exactly right when you think okay they're good and oh boy here we go 13 yeah. 11 out of 13. I'm, I'm just saving judgment. I'm thrilled to see Fulmer doing what he's doing because I think it's a lot easier to get excited about a good young player. Then it is a guy who's over the hill and giving you a magic run. I, sure. lo I love to see what Fulmer's doing. I would love to, but Mike, I, I don't want to be the mean guy, I know. but let me wait. I want to say two words to you. Sample size. Sample uh -huh. size. Oh, sample size is, that's one of the words, but here's two others. Red pop. Okay, go easy. We have, do you remember? <laughs> Come on now. Do you remember red pop? Yeah, but he didn't have the pedigree of this kid. Hey, we were excited. All right. He was hitting the ball all, all over the place. We wanted to put a plaque up there too. Let me let me give you another name, Mark the Bird Fidrich. Okay, wonderful rookie season. Blew his arm out. I want to wait a little while before we say All right. this guy. But you know what? He, what I've seen is wonderful. When he's pitching now, here here's where I've gone. I looked up the little thing. Oh, Fulmer's Fulmer's pitcher. I'm gonna watch. Yes. He's at least reached that status where, you know, I'm curious enough to see what this young man's going to do. I have no issue with him. I think the whole city should feel that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, no matter how down you are on the team, if Fulmer's taking the mound, there's a bit of intrigue there. Mm -hmm. I think Verlander's got people excited to watch him again. He continues to pitch well. Zimmerman is who he is. He's a really good MLB pitcher. So, yeah, you want to root for it. It's just I have a hard time doing it. The Jekyll and Hyde offense, a bullpen I don't trust. And then you got to look at it and go, okay. How much of this can Verlander preserve? How much of this can Fulmer preserve? I'm like you. I don't want to. I don't want to go crazy with it because, like I said, just a week ago we were all down and out. Week before that, they started playing up, beating bad teams. We're all high as a kite. Then you go a week, ten days before that, they couldn't win a game in seemingly two weeks. I don't. I don't know what to do with this team. I don't believe they're going to win this division. I'm just going to sit and wait. And you know what? They're playing good ball. They're in striking distance. The White Sox have fallen apart. Kansas City's got a team ERA near five as far as their starters go. It would seem to be an opportunity, but then this would be the time where what? They go out, they lose six of eight. Sure. So I, I just, I'm with you. All I was saying was TTF over there. He's no. coming in all proud of himself today, little Tiger T-shirt, and he goes, hey, listen, you know, I think we can do four hours of Tiger's Day.
I guess. <laughs> well, and I'll tell you this. I was just handed a famous uh, Bob Dillikin post-it note. An office opinionist, Bob Dillikin, you know, has joined us. He, he writes these little stats on the post-it notes and ha- hands it over sometimes. Okay, what do we have? And, and this is a fact to buy in for the Tigers. Tigers since April 12th, 1-8 mm-hmm. and eight when Sanchez starts and 28-20. and 20 for non-Sanchez starts. I'm already taking bets that they're going to win the World Series. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Bob Dillikin, office opinionist, strikes again. But but let me say this. It's an interesting note, but again, here's the problem. You're also getting some of the pixie dust now from Fulmer and Verlander. They're pitching like two of the best guys in baseball, and I don't buy that. They are, but here here here's how you know baseball is different in this town. Fulmer is 6-1, and one, okay, in eight starts. If this was the 1970s or 1980s, he would already be a folk hero in this town. Right. There would be a buzz about him. People, they would get 40000 for his games. It shows that baseball has diminished in this town. Fulmer is a good story, but he's not an icon yet. And, Mike, I know we talk sample size, but if a guy is pitching this way after eight games, 70s and 80s, He's already like, oh, we got, hey, yeah. got to get tickets for the game. I don't sense that yet for him. He's legit, man. He's legit. And he has the stuff. He has the pedigree. Do I, do I feel you're going to laugh and be like, oh, that's really stupid. But, like, yes, do I feel better about him because they got him from another organization because he comes from the Mets who know pitching? Yeah, I do. I mean, that that's that's just how I am. It's almost like if in, in the old days you would have gotten someone from the Braves. The Braves know pitching. Fulmer has the pedigree. He has the stuff. He's unleashing this change up the last four or five starts. And now he has the look of a guy who's going to give you re- not the John Lowe bad hat stat line, the real quality game. Six innings, one earned. Seven innings, two earned. And he has the potential to strike out everybody. Well, there's another magical thing about him. Mm. He's got Mike Valenti beard. He has good legs. He, has, he, he does. has your beard. He does. But we're doing it for different reasons. Okay. Michael, badass mother Fulmer. Unbelievable, Pat. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's just delicious. Um, no, we do it for different reasons. I, I just view the beard as, as, as a makeup kit for men. You know, mm. women can doll themselves up uh, seven ways to Sunday. And some, of these, uh, some of the famous ladies look like different people. I just view the beard as a way to, you know, add makeup to your face. Draws attention away from my nose, my bad eyebrows. And my Shrek-sized head. I just feel like it gives me a, a little, a, a little. Your eyebrows added. are not as you don't have the unibrow like you used to. Well, that's you shamed me. Thank you. You, were, you look. <laughs> was, was my man? Um, not Bart Simpson. There was another Bart. Oh Jesus! That just had like a. I mean, oh, you come used to. On. You used that's, to. Wait a second. That used was never to. Not like that. now. Gee, you're whiz. a handsome little guy now, oh, pal. God, I mean, what, what cartoon are you comparing? It me was to? um, it was a bald-headed guy, but he had a unibrow. I thought it was one named Bert. Oh, no, no, not Bert and Ernie. Yeah, Bert and Ernie. Come on. That was it. Hang on a second. I'll take a lot. But that was, that guy had a crowbar for an eyebrow. Yeah, yeah, but people loved him. Jeez. I mean, Lindy, (laughs) come on. Give me something. I said you're used to, not now. That is tough. Come on. That is tough. 248 539 97. You dress better than him. Thanks. Mainly because he wore the same creepy shirt for 10 years of a TV show. Well, you wear the same creepy Spartan thing every day. That's true. I've got two of these. I tell you, these are unbelievably comfortable. These little dry fit routines. Oh, okay. These things, this is like a slipper for your body. It's just delicious. I'm always always telling my wife, like, when she's throwing laundry in, Mm -hmm. hey, uh, give me an express mail on the uh, half zips. Oh, wow. <laughs> Throw those in again so I can get wear them, more. Get them out. They're comfy. Yeah, he's got to be at the front of the line. I love these things. Beautiful.